All right, so this is the final uh, presentations, group two, for our very, very first Nebula cohort of the NASA Open Science 101 training with OLS. I'm trying to see how many acronyms I can, like, <laughs> stuff in there. Um, so, folks, uh, we'll run through the usual bits of housekeeping, just to remind everyone what's going on. Uh, so first one is just if you're not speaking, but there's any chance of background noise, please keep your microphone on mute just so that we don't get any reverberation. It's always fine to unmute uh, if you need to speak. So right now um, we have several people presenting. Uh, you were asked to present over about five minutes. Um, you already have been warned this call is being recorded and will be on YouTube soon. We have captions available. Um, if you are live on the call, uh, not watching it on YouTube, then you click on the top left and you get the option to view the captions on Otter AI. Um, we have a code of conduct. So when presenting, and interacting with one another, please do treat one another with the respect that you would like to receive. Um, or if you feel like that hasn't happened either to you or to someone else, then you can report that so that we can try and reduce the um, risk of this happening in the future by emailing either team at weareols.org or any of the organizers individually on the etherpad that's line 38 and 39. Um, so we're going to hop straight into presentations. I'm going to have a timer on my screen. You have up to five minutes to present. Um, depending on how things go, we're probably going to ask people to put questions directly in the etherpad because we have enough presenters that I think if we take Q&A, we're going to run really, really late, um, but we will give everyone a huge round of applause and then hop straight on to the next presentation. Have I forgotten anything or shall we start? Yes, because some people are leaving early. Maybe we can take the group picture um, at the start so that everyone will be there, if that's okay. Good call, good call. Um, if you would like to be in the group picture, uh, it's completely optional. Everyone camera on, um, make your most OLS face. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that's beautiful. And in three, two, one. Uh, no, it's not really. Okay. So cheers. And let me see, can I post this in here? Yeah, and I'll post it in Slack so I don't forget. Uh, right. All right. Okay, so let's do the uh, presenting, my friends. It's so exciting to have you all here. Um, first person on the list, I believe, is Madison. So, Madison, are you ready? I am ready to go. All right. Give me one moment here. I will start sharing my screen. Patience is appreciated. And just let me know if everybody can see the screen. Okay, perfect. And timer's on. All right. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, everybody. I want to say, first off, it's been a pleasure getting to know you all throughout the cohort. Great minds, great opportunities to have some conversations about open science. So my name is Madison Feehan, and I am the founder and CEO of an aerospace startup called Space Copy. It's in the 3D printing industry. I'm also the co-founder of another startup company called Moon Trades that's in the STEM education industry as well. Just to give you guys a quick kind of about me before I dive in. So my companies, respectively, Space Copy, we're in the 3D printing industry. We're building infrastructure in extreme environments. And a lot of that has to do with building algorithms that are based on open source code and data. Um, about the project with Moon Trades, it's an AI-enhanced interactive STEM education platform. And with that, a lot of open science content is being utilized, trying to teach students from K to 12, all the way to post-secondary and early career professionals about space sciences, STEM and responsibility using open science. It's all part of our framework. So this cohort couldn't have come at a better time. Uh, about myself personally, I do come from a NASA background, having done some open science training in the past and working for NASA's planetary science division. Uh, moving along, uh, I want to discuss how we're currently using open science and some of the key takeaways that I got from this OLS Nebula cohort. 
So how we're doing the open science integration right now is we're doing uh, algorithm software and database collection using open source code um, for space copy, developing lunar instrumentation. Something that we use a lot of is called NASA T-Rex. Now that's a database that contains a whole bunch of open source information that's been compiled from researchers around the globe and it's being allowed to be used by students and career professionals. And we're taking that data, we're sourcing it, we're sifting through it and we're building algorithms around it to be able to identify anomalies in lunar soil. Um, parallel to this with Moon Trades and the education platform, we're using open educational resources or OERs that are crucial in facilitating knowledge sharing, gathering together open source data, um, projects that are coming from NASA to teach to students. Um, the Nebula cohort for me really, really emphasized the value of open science. I think it's something that a lot of us in the science industry tend to forget about is how to foster collaboration, how to scout sustainability and how to be responsible with your open source data. For us, it serves as the foundation for engagement and it facilitates a better value exchange. Um, some of the challenges that we definitely face, and I think maybe some of these things that were brought up during the cohort, working with my mentor, Chad, who's incredible, uh, was the challenge of decentralizing outputs and allowing some of these incremental parts of open science to benefit a broader community. So we've come up with some strategies that we're currently employing and some that we'd like to employ in the future. So first, we're working right now to leverage the OERs for the STEM education platform to make sure that content is reaching diverse audiences. And we're developing educational materials that highlight the principles of open science. But our future plans are to do two things. Number one is we want to build up on the data that we're already collecting and figure out a better way to communicate it. And that's going to involve a lot of open education, a lot of collaboration, a lot of conversations. And the second part of that is to train our employees and our interns around what open science is, what its principles are, and how we can best harvest it and spread that knowledge to greater community. Um, some supporting resources and use cases. Um, as I mentioned, the NASA T-Rex, which is the toolbox for research and exploration, and the Transformation to Open Science, or TOPS, program coming out of NASA, are essential databases that contain so much great information that's around open science. Um, another organization called NASA's Lunar Surface Innovation Consortium, or just LSIC for short, is a group of scientists and researchers from around the globe that are based in Maryland, which is where I am today on my way to go present over there about open science. Uh, we use platforms over there like Unreal Engine, to be able to expand our development capabilities. Um, we're gonna use that in Moon Trades to develop the education platform. It's just this kind of collaborative nature of being able to recognize what open science is, find where those good databases are, how to sustainably and responsibly credit them and how to use them towards a better future. And since joining the Nebula cohort, I'd say kind of my key takeaways are to just be in it, immerse yourself in open science, and just be part of the community and spread that open science for others. So I think that comes right around to the end of my five minutes. So thank you all so much for your time and listening. And it's been a pleasure getting to know you all. Woohoo! Thank you so much, Madison. Huge round of applause, everyone. Uh, so folks, sorry. Um, any questions that you might have, uh, please put them in the etherpad for Madison. Uh, since we have a lot of people, we're going to move straight on to the next person. Uh, Madison, if you, feel free to drop off whenever you need to. Um, okay, looks like the next person that we have up is Austin. Austin, are you here and are you ready? Uh, thank you so much, Yong. Uh, I'm trying to upload the presentation on Zenodo. I think that's what I'm trying to do. And uh, I've done that. Uh, I'm working on the, the link. Uh, that may take about two to three minutes. I don't know if someone can come in and so that I can present there. Sure. So um, do you want to come back to you later and we'll go to the next person on the list? Yeah, and that, that's fine with me. Thank you so Super. much. 
Super, okay. Uh, so folks, if you're here and you're planning to present, um, but you haven't added your name to the list, please do. Uh, right now, line 136 is the correct place to add your name if you're planning to present today. For now, we're gonna hop on to our next presenter. So that will be, um, I believe is Priya. Yes. Shall I share the screen? Go for it. So, are you able to view it? We can see and am it. I audible? Um, yep, yep, this looks perfect. Take it away. Okay. So, okay, uh, it's afternoon here and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I'm going to present what Nebula, OLS Nebula has taught me and what has been done. So I will start with what motivated me to be part of this program and why it was important for my project, how the Nebula part helped me and what was learned, done, and what will be the next steps. Okay, so first, the motivation was two certain aspects that came to my mind back in 2018 or 19, I think. So I was attending one of the lectures and um, I learned about one thing. Uh, can you imagine what this could be? Okay, it's full of plastic. They have made a model uh, and this shows uh, the recent model uh, that has been shown how uh, uh, the environment is getting polluted. So I don't know how many of you know that plastic uh, is one of the findings that got Nobel Prize. And still we can say it is useful and uh, useful and irreplaceable in many aspects. And it is the same for LED lights, which was also getting Nobel Prize. And then we all know that it is useful and irreplaceable, but then uh, how it has been used and led to some sort of pollution is basically, in my opinion, it is due to lack of access to the information that is available and the lack of science communication. So, which is why uh, so many um, um, issues are that we are facing in today's world. So this led me to think deeper, but I didn't have an opportunity to do further. And now at this point of time where I'm working on materials, which is below naked eye level and which is using spectroscopies like uh, some vital tools that are used to study and understand them. Such kind of spectroscopies are very expensive and uh, it is dealing with complex materials. This means this is revolving around basically about uh, what I was mentioning earlier, but then I'll come back to that later. But why I think it is important for my project it often leads to misinterpretation. It is a very uh, small material that we are dealing with. It can be two different forms of misinterpretation. I am I might be saying it right, the other person in the end might not be receiving it well, or it will be me who is interpreting it in not 100% uh, or um, in a right way. And then it is taken further, uh, um, that leads to uh, uh, further issues uh, along the line. So the question is, how does the interpretation work or how well it is interpreted? For example, I can tell about a scenario where interpretation has been done during 1980s, which was giving an input, but that led to a chain of strong claims, which was only partially true. And it was never readdressed or revisited in a sense that it might be leading to um, some uh, misinformation or something like that. And it has continued over the years for decades. And uh, the recent solution that I found for one of the spectroscopy was experts from the particular spectroscopy came together to address it through um, giving out uh, information for anybody who wants to access the tool. So that is where I found how important it is to communicate what we are doing for the research community or even to the society as well. So these two things uh, was nagging my mind to put uh, together into my research. So how OLS Nebula helped me to bring this into a reality. When I started, I thought open science is just uh, open access uh, publications. I didn't know anything else. But now I know open science is so much more with all sorts of tools, data management, how to handle the data, when to share and when not to share, uh, like how to initiate a dialogue with someone who is not into open science. So, so many aspects that I have learned. And 
before starting the project that I wanted to do, I thought, okay, I need to have a coding experience. So I have, but it has been a long um, gap and I was hesitant. But then the project itself started, um, taught me how to start small and how to be ready to incorporate the present knowledge. I can develop things later, but that was the present knowledge. So finally, what was learned during this project? So I wanted to share data and I also want to find and uh, uh, find the data and uh, be it uh, available for others to reuse. So in that case, I thought the data repository will be an option. So for this, um, I get, have the idea for collecting data using the wealth of information. As researchers, we always collect several other information. Sorry for the delay. So I thought uh, using the data repository by using the wealth of information and uh, uh, by collecting data that can be documented uh, into all forms of data and information. Uh, this will be benefiting for the community, for the society and for myself as well. So I started with a basic website creation that is a data repository, which is dedicated for my field of research. This was done using our studio. And I think this will be a platform which will be open for all, not just for the research community, but for also for in future for the society. So the next steps will be to pushing this website to GitHub. It's just a basic one, but still we will try to push it to GitHub. Finding community to take it forward, uh, to work with some like-minded people who will be ready to contribute as well, and to build an advanced website for the web repository, and also eventually to work on some citizen science project. Thank you. Thank you so much, Priya. It's really exciting to see what you've learned there. Folks, can we have a huge round of applause and Thank sparkle you. hands? I love the sparkle hands. <laughs> so, I'm folks. Stopping share. There we yeah. go. I always get this panic at the last minute, like, how do I make it stop? Uh, <laughs> um, Austin, are you ready to present? Yeah, now, now I'm ready. I'm going to present now. But I will simply share my screen. I think I can upload it later on, I think, because I think I need to, to resolve my link. Uh, Fair enough. If you can allow me. Um, you should okay. be able to. Okay. No, uh, yo, I don't have permission to share the screen. My, oh, my link um... is muted. Uh, um... It should be allowed. Um, I've tried. To it's not. It. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Okay. So maybe. Um. Maybe get the slides uploaded. Uh. And then once that's resolved, one of us can screen share, and we'll move on to the next one. Is that okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we'll get okay. there. I promise. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll share with Irene, I think. <laughs> perfect. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank and then you. in that in that case, we'll hop on to Farah. Farah, are you um here and ready to present? Yes, I'm here. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from the Philippines. So it's it's nighttime here. Let me just share my screen. So as I said earlier, I'm just I'm stepping in for Denise. Denise is the one who's been attending the sessions online. Uh, I have sorry, I have to turn off my video because my internet is not so good. So uh Denise and I are uh implementing this project, Zoom app project. It's uh implemented through the Eberswalde University for Sustainable Development in Germany. It's uh, supported by the Volkswagen Institute, Volkswagen Foundation. So Denise is based in Germany and I'm uh, based here in the Philippines. So just to share about ZoomUp, ZoomUp is short for zoonosis and cultural evolution, mapping the past, present, and future of wildlife consumption and trading in Mongolia and the Philippines. So our project aims to investigate the role of social cultural relations of indigenous and local communities in enabling or in relation to wildlife trade and consumption 
of Tarbagan marmot, so you see here on the left, and the Philippine pangolin. Both um, species are um, endangered. The Tarbagan marmot is uh, endangered. The Philippine pangolin is critically endangered. So we're just uh, starting implementing this project in the Philippines uh, with in the Philippines and Mongolia, we finished uh, here one, but something that we discussed with our um, coach, who is uh, Virginia, a marine biologist from the UK, she's here. Hi, Virginia. Uh, is one of our requirements for the project from our um, funder, Volkswagen Foundation, we need to have a data management plan for the um, zoom up. So, our I think one of my key takeaways from the the session with Virginia, we only had um one session so far, but even if the Nebula program is ending soon, uh, we agreed that we would still meet and that we would still avail of the other days of coaching if that's okay. Still with uh Virginia. Yeah, so uh, so one of our key takeaways and an important thing for data management is identifying key people who will uh, ensure the implementation of the data management plan. So one critical thing for us here is to make sure that the Mongolia team and the Philippines team uh, agree on, on the data management plan and how we are going to uh, move forward with it, especially when we uh continue with our data collection uh for the for both the different countries so yeah i think uh important learnings for me for myself it's my first time hearing about uh or attending a training on open science and i've really learned a lot from the sessions um i've been watching since uh day one by through the YouTube that you've been posting, it's uh, it's very good experience. So I learned a lot from the basics, from the ethos of open science, the DORA declaration. I've heard that for the first time through the through the Nebula, fair principles, and the importance of uh, putting a license or a assigning the correct license in your science communication. What uh, also amazed me is the emergence of preprints and the preprints peer review. This is really very new, and I think it's um, it's a it's a good development. So yeah, I just I guess I just wanted to say uh, also thank you to everyone. Thank you especially to the organizers and the key facilitators. Yo know, and Irene, I it's my first time to attend the the actual session, but I feel like I kind of know you because of. Uh, viewing the sessions online. So I, I, I think everyone's been great. You're grand. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Everyone, can we have a great round of applause for Farah? Um, am I allowed to hug the marmot? You're probably yes. going to... Yes. Okay, I was totally expecting that to be a wild animal and just be like, no, no, stay away, especially since there's the word zoonosis in there. <laughs> All right, um, Irena and Austin, should we move to you or um, do you need a few more minutes? Yes? Yes. Okay, uh, take it away. I'll reset that timer. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you. Um, I'm just waiting for, for Irina to, to share the screen. It's live. Can you see it? No, unfortunately, I can't see it. <laughs> mm, I'm going to suggest try maybe leaving and rejoining because I wonder if the screen share is just being a bit strange. Okay, okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> let, let me try to rejoin. I, I, I need to present. <laughs> you do. <laughs> okay, thank you. We'll wait just a moment. We're not going to skip this time, don't worry. Thank you, Mohammed. 
while um, we're just resetting things, uh, folks, if you are presenting today, but you haven't added your name yet, uh, line 147 is the place to add your name to present. Um, and don't forget that while we're waiting, you can also go and add questions or ask, um, answer questions for the people who have presented so far. Irene, um, the the works in the bathroom have started being very noisy. So I'm going to ask, are you able to take over the audio um, and hosting from here? I don't know if you can hear that. I will be that. sharing my screen. So oh, yeah. So maybe it won't be good. So maybe after that. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I, I can do it. The good news is very, very soon I will have a brand new bathroom and I'm so excited. Hmm. Okay, next person will be um Swati, you haven't present you haven't presented yet, have you? If you unmute, we will hear you better. Are we just loading? Yeah. All good. All good. <laughs> Tell you what, Austin is nearly here. Uh, yeah, it just took a second to load, but I, I see it now. Or do you want to go with Austin? Because that's okay. You know, I, I can see yeah. it's in a while. Let, <laughs> let's, let's hop back to Austin. We're going to do this thing. Irene and Austin, do you want to take this one away? <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, now my share screen, I think the button is now on. I think I can, I can share. Is it okay? Yeah. Take it away. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Let me try to share my screen then. Any luck? No, uh, just two minutes. I'm working on it. Okay, Doug. Yeah, sure. Is it okay, you? I can see your presentation. <laughs> you can you can see my presentation? We can. Okay, can I start? Yeah, go for it. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Austin Perry. Uh, you can see my photo there. Uh, it's a privilege that I was in Brazil with the Irene and, and other colleagues for the Innovation Science Diplomacy uh, last year from 24th to August. Yeah, so that was my first lesson <laughs> on open science. Yeah, it's a privilege to attend this session as well. Yeah, so um, I work with the, the university uh, in Malawi. Um, 
my, my interest is uh, my passion is uh, on open science data management, but I, I also train a uh, research trainer in the university. But at the moment, I'm also doing my PhD in information science uh, with the University of South Africa. But uh, my uh, on that aspect, my research focus is on medical data management, medical records, and preservation. Yeah, so my areas of interest uh, is basically on data management, data creation, open science, citizen science, knowledge translation, records management, archives management, etc. Uh, so I'm passionate about open science, and it's a privilege to attend this session, April session uh, on the open science. Yeah, so my project was the only data management plan for, for my university. I think knowing that uh, there is so much research that goes on that is done uh, within the university, but uh, the none is uh, mostly none uh, is shared and, uh, and uh, there is little that is uh, appreciated uh, by the international community, but also there's a little use of data. So I thought that maybe I could share uh, and develop a data management plan for my university so that it could uh, benefit uh, the researchers, but also the university as a whole, but also the international community. So that, that was my my I, my project. Uh, so I ended up, I, what I did was to create or to draft the DMP template uh, for the university. And uh, based on that, I had to look at uh, specific sections that uh, I thought that they were very important. Of course, based on what we have learned uh, in this uh, Nepola uh, program. Yeah, so I, I have a separate document for this data management, but so what I've done is simply to extract those sections and, and present to you right over here. Yeah, so the first uh, section, there are about nine sections in total. So the first section is on administrative details. So in that template, you will find contact details, uh, the orchid, or the name of project to which this data management plan applies, description of the research etc. So I think those are simply for administrative details. So for any research project, uh, you could feel those details very important. And the, those are just some of the details, but there are also other details like funding and, and others. Uh, and then data collection uh, talks about uh, if uh, the project uses existing data or third party data, if there's an agreement for the use of existing data and so on, how you collect or create data, what type of data will you collect and create in, in what format. So uh, basically it will, it will talk about all aspects of the data collection, which are very essential. If you like to share data, you like other people to access your data, you need to define uh, those important aspects. But also this type of data management plan template would also speak to data storage and security, which is important. Uh, so in terms of functionalization or ethics, confidentiality restrictions. Yeah, so uh, the, the researcher, for instance, or students would, would specify uh, if there's any confidentiality restrictions about their data and the risks to data security, they would also mention that and the, how the data will be backed up. Yeah, so there could be those specific aspects that will need to be identified in the, in the research project. But also in terms of data documentation, in terms of standards or conversion for naming or folder structures, how that will be handled and the handle version controls in terms of what is the version of the data that is going to be shared and the, what standard Did we just lose our stain? Okay, other people are moving, so I know it's not me. <laughs> I think we lost her. Yeah, I think we did. Oh dear, this, uh, the tech is not on our side today. <laughs> okay, let's. Um, we can come back to Austin. Um, she had about thirty seconds left when it all went poof. Um, but my internet connection is sorry. My the sound in the background is being a bit awkward. Um, Irene, are you able to take uh, people up from here? I'm sorry, what did you say? Yeah. 
Oh, sorry, yeah. I was asking um, Irene, are you able to start hosting from here? I think so, yes. Um, sorry, that, because I, I left for a few minutes. Um, um, Do you want to? We... So we've just had um, as far as Farah and Austin, um, so I think Swati is next. Swati, are you able to share your screen now? Yeah, so do I go for it? All right, okay. I just don't want Austin to think that we just bailed. <laughs> okay. Can you see my screen? And is it in the presentation mode? Or are you still seeing what I'm, I think is okay now? It's not in the presentation mode. So, so yeah, there you go. Okay. All right, um, Yo, do you want to reset the timer? Yes, I do. I mean, you could have gotten away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Keep it. As brief as possible. There's not, not, not a lot I can say that, that's different from the others in any case. Okay. Um, right, hello everybody. My name is Swathi and my mentor was Sarah. Um, firstly, I'd like to say thank you for being here, everybody. And yeah, I've got a bit of a split title, which is in two different colors for the simplest reason, because when I did enroll for the program, I thought this was about technical writing and how to make technical writing open. But as soon as I started with the first day and the second day, and I was like, okay, hang on, this is something that I've always wanted to do, but I just didn't know how. So then I was like, okay, what do I exactly want to do with my project and the OLS? And that's where the DMPs and the dissemination of my data is what I started focusing on. So to re-abbreviate, DMPs are data management plans, and this is what I focused with uh, my coach, trying to improve on those. Um, yeah, uh, a little bit about what I do. I am a material scientist, and I want to make smart implant materials, which means I work with most of the physiological aspects of materials, so chemistry, physics, sciences, but not biology of it. And this means there are a lot of regulatory issues and a lot of overlapping fields. And this requires data to be shared in the most sensitive and yet in the most open fashion possible. And which is why I think the OLS platform was perfect because it was a blessing in disguise, to be honest. Um, so yeah, apart from that, my motivation was clearly two things, which is information and inclusivity, because for me, it's very important as a project leader to have people all on the same page, which means from stakeholders to users, to even people who are doing things. Because if you have the same ethos, then you can sort of work together and move forward a certain way. And inclusivity is a huge aspect of this, which means that you know it's not just about scientists separating the science from the people, because ultimately we're doing it for the common good. So there's no point of trying to be too, too calling everything proprietary is counterintuitive to inclusivity. Um, the last thing that I wanted to focus on was my expectations from the course and what I really want to incorporate is from, from my personal working style is documentation. And I use the word documentation and acceptance because part of it is the technicality of it, but the other half happens to be mindset, which means that when you document, you oftentimes only document successes. And this, while it's awesome, can also be a little counterintuitive because nobody gets there on the first go. So when you talk, so I want to document failures, which are of course arbitrary, but if you see the entire roadmap towards a journey that helps in developing better protocols and also offers a more solid foundation to build upon, which is why I think for the DMPs will, my DMPs will focus on documentation mostly. So yeah, what did I do with my coach was we started doing these kind of outlining. So we storyboarded and we used Open Canvas to make like a full project outline. Of course, there are several things in this and yeah, you can read it at your own time. But the highlight for me was that when you write these things, even though they're broader topics, it helps you focus on all the specificities. For example, if you've got a solution that says adaptive response, Sure, that's adaptive, but what do you mean by that? Things like, oh, can it be pH sensitive? Can it be sensitive to a certain enzyme in certain people and so on and so forth? So it helps you to document um, your work plan in many more details, which is something that I really liked. Um, in addition to that, of course, you would want that after a program like this, you become the best grant writer or something like that. 
But that's not what happened with me. About three days ago, I had a really interesting discourse with my boss, wherein, of course, I went on a rant about, okay, this is how I want to publish and this is who I want to publish with. She was a bit in opposition in the beginning because she said, oh, it's not famous enough. It's not big enough. And somehow I ended up actually going on a rant with her. And I said, we cannot have the uh, objectivity of having inclusiveness and open sciences and then talk about the IF shit and all of that. And what she did was send me another email and saying, okay, I understand where you're coming from. Let's do it together. And that's also she, how she pointed out on the different things you could do in order to also increase um, the favoritism towards, let's say, using preprints, pre-reviews, in addition to using fully open access journals, even if they're not very high in impact factor, which actually helps a lot for new journals because that's the first step. So I was like, I would be willing to take the loss than just you know publish in a high impact factor and then preach about something that I'm not even going to follow. So yeah, we did that. Um, long story short, um, for me, the whole OLS journey was, of course, there are technicalities like GitHub was great, uh, forces me to use my computer more. Uh, but apart from that, it was about cultivating a mindset, you know, and I think we've set the ball in motion because now three people in my group work with OLS, all, all these open science principles. So it's Priya, me and my boss, which is already a pretty good start for a group of 17. So, yeah, that is pretty much what I did. And big shout out to Yo, Irene, Sarah, all of you who were here and also the free free photographs. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Please connect. I'm on LinkedIn and you can always email me. So. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I will stop sharing screen. Once again. So, oh, oh my God, Irene, I said, can you take over? And then I've done that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Irene, I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> You're welcome to continue, but um, I'm also happy to take it over uh, from here. And next, Swati, that was really great to hear uh, how you changed and adapted. As, as you went along the program. And I am always really impressed when people start having these conversations and yeah, and converting other people to open science. It's great hearing about your progress. Thank um, you. So please, yeah, sorry, sorry. No, no, just saying thank you. <laughs> thank you for the opportunity to begin with. Yeah, so please leave questions in the notepad and comments for Swati and for everyone who has presented. And um, yeah, please give Swati a round of applause. I think he did that already. <laughs> so our next presenter is Andrew. Andrew, are you ready to share your screen? Yes, I am. So here we go. Um, OK. Um, Everybody can see and, and hear me, right? Okay, I'm Andrew Geronic. I'm the CEO of ScienceCast, and I have had a career in uh, legal research. Um, ScienceCast is trying to design an online platform uh, for researchers, leveraging advanced uh, advances in software tools. Uh, uh, we so we we present ourselves as a research management platform and hoping to integrate and, and intending to integrate and foster and facilitate open science. Uh, my mentor was uh, Daniela from Pre-Review, which was doing the, the preprint uh, reviews. If you remember, I want to give a shout out to her. Really appreciated her help because um, I reviewed a lot of that with this with her. In fact, even as late as yesterday. So uh, what, as an initial matter on our platform, we offer a better search engine where a researcher can access current research in their topic of interest. So what we do is we uh, use advanced embedding techniques into uh, the, a, um, the universe of research papers. Um, and, um, and that way we can construct a, a graph of the papers and we will display that uh, with a series of what the paper, very short summaries of the papers that you can then click on and link to the papers. Um, and we uh, um, also uh, 
uh, link, we, we can automate uh, video and audio presentations of those papers. So now the papers are coming across not only in, uh, in you know, text format, which these papers are 20, 30 pages long, they can come across in a one minute pitch in an audio or video pitch that can be easily uh, digested by the reviewers. Uh, we are linked to other repositories. So uh, the principal repositories we're currently linked to as we develop our platform, our uh, archive and bioarchive. So here you see a, uh, a paper that was uploaded to bioarchive, an e-paper. Um, and we, what we've done is we've summarized it using an a, a, using AI. It can be displayed in, in a general uh, summary uh, or in an expert level summary. So that that helps that can help a reviewer get through things. Um, then, of course, the reviewer after listening to that can always uh, exit back and and review the paper. Um, uh, we after hearing a pitch and de before determining whether to dive into the 20 or 30 page paper with very complex material, it has the opportunity to ask questions. So you can ask a question of the paper and we will automate answers for the paper. As well, uh, we have the information on the researcher that prepared the paper or prepared the presentation, video, audio pitch. And so you can interact directly with them to ask questions and start a dialogue, collaborate, something we've heard a lot from other presenters today. Um, we link to social media to notify uh, third parties about uh, important research and to, and to more widely disseminate, drives traffic back to our website where, uh, where the research can be reviewed. Um, we, uh, also track the number of views for a particular research presentation. Um, we collect comments on the reviews. Uh, this particular one you can see that 251 views, three comments, people following up, asking questions and, and giving some feedback right away. Um, and then they can upvote it. Um, so that's sort of a crowdsourced peer review, which, it, which helps a, a, a researcher who's presenting his work, refine it and make it better. Um, and then how has Nebula affected uh, 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 our, my work with, with this particular platform? I think introducing us to the FAIR principles um, uh, and, and sort of underscoring that is really the cornerstone of open science. Um, uh, introducing to the, the richness of the repositories out there and connecting us to them. We want to work with more and more repositories because we think we can help them make their research uh, more available and freely accessible. Um, persistent identifiers, the open access ecosystem, where, where can we make improvements uh, on our platform? Because we're just getting going. And how can, I, how can science cast help researchers. Our plan is to continue to develop and we want to provide co-pilots to the researcher to help them um, help them do their research. So I guess finally, just if you guys could spread the word about the work that we're doing and, and come to our website and register and use it. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Can we give Andrew a round of applause, please? <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Um, there are some comments that are left in the notepad if you can go back and read them. And also please share a link to, to your platform um, in the notepad so that people can, um, can access that. Um, and so our next presenter is Alejandra. Alejandra, are you ready to share? Yes. Mm, yes, uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, I can yeah, see that, perfect. but it's not um, in presenter mode. I know. Wait. Yeah, it should be now? Yeah, it is. Perfect, thank you. Uh, so, should I start? Uh, so, my project um, is about an open game for learning open data skills in schools, in elementary schools. Uh, well, my name is Alejandra Salis Vargas. My mentor is Virginia Garcia. 
And yeah, I'm very happy to be in this uh, presentation today. So a little bit about me. So my background is in industrial design and strategic design. I am originally from Colombia, uh, but uh, right now I'm based in Copenhagen uh, because of my PhD. I'm studying a PhD right now. Um, so besides that, I also have uh, some years of experience as designer in different fields, from furniture to also innovation with citizens uh, and municipalities. So I think all of that background brought me to, to this project right now. And I am very happy of finding OLS and the, all I have learned with the open science. It, it's new for me and it has been very rich and I think it's very crucial for my next step and for the future of my career. So I think I'm, I'm very happy for that. Uh, so currently, I am in the last year of my PhD schools. And in specific, my focus is on uh, the development of competences for using open data. And uh, this project is part of an European project and uh, funded by the European Commission. And uh, what else can I say? So I want to introduce a bit the background of my project as well. So the starting point is the, the lack of skills of citizens or the, the large part of citizens for actually using open data. So the open data movement um, claims the big benefits of open data. And I, I personally think it's very, it's very um, utopic, like having data as an open and a new common resource that everybody can use and everybody can um, increase their participation and their accountability of the society, the government, or, or about research as well. So I think it's uh, a very like useful and viable resource, but in reality, um, a lot of people cannot really use it because it's very difficult to access it, to understand it. So normally citizens face uh, data portals that are not really like uh, friendly for reading or accessible or big data sets that are, uh, yeah, like it's another language or programming languages are actually, that actually are very different like for regular citizens and very complicated for people to, to understand. So that's the starting point of my project, how we can start uh, from the school to build a new community of, of an open data literate community. And in my current research, I have found that um, it's not just about the management of the data, but it's also about how data is contextualized and what is the context of this data. And so it's, it's equally important developing skills for managing the data, like technical skills, but also developing competences for connecting to local communities or to discussing it with the, the data owners or the problem owners. So in that, in that uh, overview, I'm currently working in the development of a role-playing game, um, which is based in the process of data journalism. So students in the schools, they play to be journalists to solve a mystery. Uh, so in that in that way, they analyze some water quality data and environmental data uh, to learn the competences for open data. So what about the learnings about uh, the open science in my project? I think, as I said before, it has been a huge, like it opened my view about that it, openness. It's not just about the openness of data. That is like the small part of my project, but it's about uh, the connection with in all stages of my process. So how can I really create a project that could be open by default? So really like the challenge of um, opening not just the final result, but uh, the process in itself. So how can I really make it uh, available for the students that they can also participate and even develop it with me? So I think that has been a, a big um, learning from my process, also with my mentor, Virginia. So I can see it now as a, as a citizen science project, something that also like the students and the schools, they have a role uh, in this project. And of course, I also have learned about the open tools that was totally new for me. And now I have a, a, like a bit of a, a, a lot of resources to, to take. And maybe something that somebody else uh, mentioned, like this open science mindset. So I think that that's something new. So now in, I am like 
also addressing these conversations with my colleagues about the importance of open science. Uh, so next steps, I think um, uh, I want to finalize my current research but I see this as a future career, as I said before. So I want to write a proposal and find funding for my future development. And I see the, the role playing game as a tool for students and teachers, and hopefully connected to a sustainability challenge, like to climate, climate change, or like see the impact of open science and open data also in, in a real context. So that was fast and I'm sorry for the extra time. Thank you. Thank you, Alejandra. Um, can we give Alejandra a round of applause, please? Yeah, I, I so want to play that game as well. Um, and I loved your reflection about contextualizing open data being as important as technical skills and how that mirrors also your learning in the program. So there are a few questions in the notepad if you can go back and answer that, that would be great. Um, our next presenter is Ahmed. Are you ready to share your screen? Yes, Irene. I will come to okay. the me. I think you can all see my screen. We can see that it's not yet yes. in full screen. Yeah, okay. Good. Yeah, we can see that. Um, hello, everyone. And, and yeah, and I'm happy that it is the end of the of the Nepula, OLS Nepula program and the start of uh, a lot of learning experiences and, and and, and new activities. Uh, I am Ahmed Unshore, and I will be presenting the project that I was working on, and I'm still working on, uh, that I uh, presented to then participate within this uh, and training program, the OLS NASA NEPUDA program. Uh, the project is about uh, preparing the data management plan for social media and, and youth mental health study. And uh, let me see, say a little bit about my, myself. Uh, I am a psychologist and, and a data scientist. Psychologist who's basically turning into data scientist. Uh, I'm from Somalia. Uh, I have uh, a master's degree in psychology and a professional uh, certificate in, in data science. I am also an affiliated researcher in training at IGDOR, the Institute for Globally Distributed Open Research and Education, and also an adjunct lecturer at the School of Health and Human Services at the university called City University in Mogadishu, which is based in the capital of Mogadishu, Somalia. And I have uh, a kind of uh, wide uh, pursuit interest is spanning from cognitive uh, processes, the, the psychology of technology, and understanding human behavior, and open science, and also responsible AI. Uh, during the, this project, my coach, uh, Dr. Johanna Bayer, uh, supported uh, me a lot uh, from uh, giving very constructive feedback to providing a lot of useful resources and, 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 and discussions. Yeah, so about the project, uh, basically what I was working on during this training program was about preparing a data management plan for a research project that uh, is aimed at investigating the impact of social media on youth mental health. This is a project that uh, I am still uh, preparing to start. It's not something that I've already was doing. And, and then, then based on that, I started uh, participating in this training program. It's just something that I am planning to do and I'm currently working on. And uh, that in a way impacted uh, the things that I was uh, thinking I would able to do during the training program. Uh, but uh, 
nevertheless, uh, I have managed to draft a data management plan using the DMB tool and also uh, created an OSS page, Open Science Framework project page and uploaded the, the draft in, on that page. But it is only a mock, a mock data management plan that I have uh, prepared for training and educational purposes. And this is because that there are a lot of things that I have to finish and do regarding the research topic that I, I want to investigate. And also something that my coach also uh, uh, mentioned, which is about uh, having a clear idea about the legal aspects and regulations about data sharing and data management in, in my local community. And for that reason, I said to myself, now let uh, us try to prepare and do as uh, an experimental and training uh, in part, but I have to finish that and, and do it in, in, the, in the coming, in the coming uh, months. Uh, yeah, this is a screenshot about the, the page that I've created on the OSF uh, that I've used to, to upload the draft. Uh, during during this uh, in train program, I have learned a lot, a lot of skills. I gained a lot of knowledge uh, from uh, the FAIR principle to the really GitHub and, and, and version control. And yeah, and it was really an, an amazing an amazing uh, in, uh, sessions and, 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 training, and training activities. Next steps, uh, what I'm uh, focusing now on in the, coming, uh, in the next uh, few months is to complete the final data management plan and start uh, in conducting, conducting the study and also to contribute in open science and open source projects related to, to psychology and data science. And finally, to establish a local local open science community. Uh, thank you. And thank you all, Yo, Irene, the OLS community, and all the mentors, and, and also my colleagues in this program. And a special thanks goes to Dr. Johanna Bayer. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmed. Um, can we give Ahmed a round of applause, please? It was really great hearing how you're taking a steps towards a project that you are still in the stages of planning, like it's really the best time to incorporate open science principles. Um, so we have one last presenter in this call, that is Ian Wanyiki. Um, are you ready to present? Okay, I'm ready to present, but we are currently having a blackout, so I won't be able to share my slides at the moment, but I can share them afterwards. I don't know if that's okay with you guys. That is perfectly okay. Um, yeah, please go ahead. We can hear you. Okay, okay, okay. Has it started? Should I start or? So yeah. my name. So my name is Ian Moniki Kanyi. Um, I come from the Great Nation of Kenya. I'm, I'm currently pursuing a bachelor's degree in computer science, and my main areas of interest are everything to do with machine learning and artificial intelligence, and how we can monetize this technology for the good of humanity, let's say for the good of everybody in humanity. So first of all, I'd like to thank the OLS community, Irene and your community. Thank you for this opportunity. I'd like also to thank my mentor, my coach. His name is Aman Goel. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And I'd also like to thank the NASA TOPS community as a whole for the small grant that you gave us to help us to continue this project. Yeah, so my project was basically, it was it is to help the people who are differently abled to be able to navigate inside buildings easier, to help their navigation inside buildings easier. So basically, the main parts of these projects are two. The first part is the system will connect to the CCTV cameras in a building. And these CCTV cameras will be used to monitor the traffic flow. Let's say somebody wants to go to, let's say, the fourth floor. And there are many different routes. 
So the system, it monitors which route has the least amount of traffic so that this person who's differently abled, he can use that route that has, let's say, the least traffic at, let's say, the best possible time. The second part of my project in this system, there's a system that uses machine learning to personalize the journey for this person according to the times maybe he has gone to this building or maybe if he has gone to another building that also is, uses this system. It will personalize the journey for him based on him or her, based on how he or she moves her, his or her pace, the way maybe the routes that he or she finds to be most convenient for him or her. So basically it's helped people who are differently able. Let's say somebody is blind, let's say somebody is deaf, let's say somebody uses a wheelchair or something of the sort. It will, the, the app has a, a small device that's connected to let's say your ear that gives you some haptic vibrations. Let's say you want to use this path, it can tell you that if you go to this path, this is the best path for you that you, let's say you'll find the least resistance. Um, what I've learned from this project as we, we were doing this with my coach is that the licenses on GitHub, they're very good things for you. You can find the best projects and you can use these projects according to the licenses so that you don't infringe on anybody's IP rights and let's say maybe copyrights. The next thing is that as we were doing this with my coach, I was planning on coding the whole system of let or that traf, that tracks the traffic in the building. But after talking to my coach, well, we found that it's easier for me to go on GitHub and find somebody who has, who has already done this and has made it open source, which I think that's the best possible thing because I'm very limited when it comes to my resources. Also, the data management plan, which taught me a lot, which taught me that because I'll be using CCTV footage, I'll have to set up a very good system that monitors who accesses this CCTV footage so that if there's any leak of information or anything of the sort, we can go back and see on whose side this mistake happened. So for my next steps, actually, I want to start building, let's say, a prototype for this and to continue with the research. One of the main hurdles that I've gotten as I'm doing this is the compute power. I don't have enough compute power to train machine learning models. So if any of you in this call or any of you, if you know somewhere can get such resources, even if it, it is cloud computing, that will be a very big help to me. And also um, either today uh, either tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, I'm supposed to have an interview to become the Google Developer Students Club leader for my school. So I'm, I'm hoping I'll get that position. And using that position, I aim to teach my fellow students the principles on open science that you've taught us here in this, this program. Yeah, so basically that's it. Thank you to all the listeners and thank you to everyone as a whole. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Please give me an, a round of applause. And that was just right in time. Um, and I was able to follow your presentation, even without the slides. It was so clear. Um, and I, I was also really, really glad to hear about you building off of all your projects instead of starting from scratch. So um, is there anyone else who did not write their name on the notepad and who will present? I'm just checking in. Yeah, I don't see anyone else on the participants list who hasn't presented or hasn't planned to present in any other, any other way. So I think we still have a few people who will present, who will pre-record their presentations and we will share that in the YouTube channel as well. Um, but with that, we, we are done with the presentations. So I'm, I'm so, so inspired by everyone's projects. Congratulations, you have made it through the end of the program. And I hope that listening to each other, you have also learned um, as much as from the training sessions. 
So let's give everyone a last round of applause. Yeah, Joe, can I pass it to you to Thank you. I was hoping you would let me do that. I, and one other thing that I would simply like to add is that um, I've been watching Irene pour her heart into this program and I've seen her smiles and every time you've shared some amazing victory that you've had as part of this and thank you so much for giving us that joy. Um, but folks, can you give biggest, biggest applause, the loudest one yet for Irene, for all of the amazing work that she's done to make this cohort go. <laughs> you know what time she got up for this call? 6 a.m. <laughs> um, don't be strangers, folks. Um, we are going to really, really value feedback. This was a pilot. Um, one of the most useful things you can do for us is share Nebula with other people. Um, we will be asking people to pay for it, pay for it in the future if they can. If they can't, we don't want that to be a blocker as well. Especially share it with your rich friends. <laughs> um, is there anything else really important that we need to add? Not much. If there's any questions, I mean, upload your stuff to Zenodo if you feel comfortable doing so. We've talked about that one a lot. Um, and we may come back and invite you all for, you know, mentoring and things like that. Ahmed. Yes, yo. Yeah, uh, I just want to add something that I wasn't able to, to say during the presentation due to the time constraints. After I have started this program, I have also been selected to join another training program, which is part of an, a network called ARIN, African Reproducibility Network. And yeah, they, they have created a new training, training program called the Local Network Leads Training Program. Basically, what they're trying to do is to train a lot of researchers and educators and, and scientists and, and technical experts from different countries within the continent. And it is a program that is going to take about six months in three phases. And after that, we will become local lead networks and then hopefully regional networks. And we are now collaborating with a lot of uh, uh, RANs or, or reproducibility networks within the UK and also within Germany. And a lot of uh, in colleagues within the OLS are also uh, giving us presentations and trainings in, in that program. So that's also something, something amazing. Yeah, and for sure, I will share uh, my colleagues and, 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 and team members uh, in, the, in the RM team, uh, the OLS and its resources in this program, and they will also, I hope they will also participate in the coming future. And thank you, thank you so much. It has been such a delight, my friends. Um, anything anyone wants to share before I turn the recording off? Or do you want to go to your afternoons, mornings, and evenings? Joe, I have an announcement. OK, take it away. So just the last announcement is that we have one last um, optional meeting next week. This is just a goodbye and wrap up call. And we are going, we're not going to record that one, because again, we're, we're going to just play Open Science Domino, uh, redo and revisit the uh, Open Science Cloud that Virginia proposed in the first session and see how it compares and just chat for a bit. So it's going to be just a very casual goodbye session. And I know several of you are still finishing your coaching session. So hopefully that extra week will be the time for you to wrap up that as well. Um, and so, yeah, we will share all that information by email as well as the feedback form. Um, so yeah, those are the final announcements. I, I, have, I have a question. Could you please share how, let's say, there's a next cohort for this program, right? I was asking if you could send us links that we can send to, let's say, our friends. Yeah, if you could send that in the email. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. We will upload it 
updated information on the next sessions to our website for you to share the link very easily. Thank you.